Wayne Newton is an idol of millions of music fans, and they have made Newton one of the highest paid entertainers in the world. But all that money has brought him some difficulties, some of which are now the subject of a grand jury investigation. Our special segment by Brian Ross is about Wayne Newton's problems. This is Palm Drive in Beverly Hills, California. There are two men in this car, detectives from the district attorney's office on a stakeout in an organized crime investigation. The man they are watching, Guido Pinosi, who says he is a roofing salesman. State and federal authorities say Pinosi is a New York hoodlum from the Gambino Mafia family, a man with a long criminal record, now believed to be the Gambino family's man on the West Coast, in the narcotics business and also in show business. Pinosi is now a key figure in a federal grand jury investigation of the activities of the Gambino Mafia family in Las Vegas. An investigation that involves one of the big casinos here, the Aladdin, and one of Las Vegas' top performers, singer Wayne Newton. Yes, Newton is said to make a quarter of a million dollars a week for his nightclub act. And late last month, Newton and a partner were given state approval to buy the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas for $85 million. The federal grand jury is now investigating the role of Guido Pinosi and the mob in Newton's deal for the Aladdin. Despite his big income, authorities say Newton has had financial problems. Investigators say that last year, just before Newton announced he would buy the Aladdin, Newton called Guido Pinosi for help with a problem. Investigators say whatever the problem was, it was important enough for Pinosi to take it up with leaders of the Gambino family in New York. Police in New York say that this mob boss, Frank Piccolo, told associates he had taken care of Newton's problem and had become a hidden partner in the Aladdin Hotel deal. At a hearing of the State Gaming Board, Wayne Newton said he had no hidden partners. And Newton said under oath that he knew Guido Pinosi, but that Pinosi was just a fan and a longtime family friend. Did you know that uh, he is a purported uh, member of the Gambino organized crime family? No, sir, I did not. Are you planning to continue any relationship with Mr. Pinosi? Well, on the basis of which I've known him, I'm, I don't think that there has been a relationship. Federal authorities say Newton is not telling the whole story and that Newton is expected to be one of the first witnesses in the grand jury investigation. Newton became angry when we tried to talk to him about his relationship with Guido Pinosi. I really don't care what you want. Pardon me? I said I really don't care what you want. I'd like to talk to you about Guido Pinosi and your relationship with him. Guido Pinosi told us he doesn't know anyone named Wayne Newton. Federal authorities say they know of at least 11 phone calls Pinosi made to Newton's house in one two-month period. And authorities say those phone calls and Pinosi's relationship with Newton and other entertainment figures are now part of a broad, year-long FBI investigation of the investment of East Coast mob money from narcotics and racketeering into the entertainment business in Las Vegas and Hollywood. Brian Ross, NBC News, Los Angeles. Two cousins reportedly with mob connections and three Teamsters Union members were arrested today on extortion charges. The alleged victim, show business. The five men were involved in two cases, first reported by NBC News. Here are two reports, the first from Brian Ross. This is Lola Falana, on stage last year at the Aladdin Hotel in Las Vegas. Everywhere I look around. A federal grand jury indictment unsealed today says a powerful East Coast Mafia family tried to cash in on the enormous earning power of Miss Falana and another big name in Las Vegas, singer Wayne Newton. Federal authorities say the mob tried to move in on Newton and Falana last year when Newton asked two Mafia figures to use their power and influence in the underworld to call off threats and demands made against Newton by other mobsters from New York. The mob's involvement with Wayne Newton and Lola Falana was uncovered in New Haven, Connecticut, when FBI agents, in a routine gambling case, began tapping the phones of the local mafia boss, Frank Piccolo. Piccolo was charged today with extortion. Authorities say Piccolo agreed to take care of the mob's threats against Newton and Lola Falana's business manager, and that in return, Piccolo wanted a piece of the earnings of Newton and Falana and the proceeds of an insurance policy on Miss Falana. Also charged today with extortion, Guido the Bull Pinosi, a convicted heroin dealer 
who was arrested by FBI agents at his home in Beverly Hills early this morning. Last September, under oath before the Nevada Gaming Board, Wayne Newton said he had no relationship with the mob or Guido Pinosi. And Newton told NBC News he didn't know anyone named Frank Piccolo. But today's indictment indicates that Newton told a much different story to the federal grand jury. Authorities say Wayne Newton became a victim of the mob scheme and that Newton will be a key government witness against the two mafia figures he once went to for help. Brian Ross, NBC News. This is Copley Square in downtown Boston, and all this week a film crew has been here making a television commercial for a soft drink. In the last few years, the Boston area has become a favorite location for people who make commercials, television movies, and Hollywood films. And last year, Governor Edward King of Massachusetts even made a special trip to Hollywood, promoting Massachusetts as a great place to make films. With King in Hollywood was a member of the Governor's Film Board, a man who federal authorities say has turned filmmaking in Boston into a huge criminal racket. He is Gus Manning of the Teamsters Union, and it is Manning's Teamster drivers who drive film trucks, haul equipment, and chauffeur stars and crew members whenever a film is made in Boston. This morning, Manning and two other Teamsters were arrested on charges of racketeering. Manning would not talk with reporters. He later pleaded not guilty and was released on bail. According to the indictment, producers of six films were forced to make payoffs or salary payments to Teamsters and others who did no work. The films include The Brinks Job, produced by Dino De Laurentiis, Oliver's Story from Paramount Studios, See How She Runs, a CBS TV movie produced by CLN Productions, and International Velvet from MGM. Authorities say beyond Boston, there are FBI investigations underway in Florida, Texas, and Hawaii involving alleged payoffs to Teamsters by film producers who don't want labor troubles while on location shooting big-budget films. Lee McCarthy, NBC News, Boston.